Hello, this is Mark from Arcade Flat Pack. We've had many requests to look at how uh, you would actually build a finished arcade cabinet. So we're going to take a quick look in part one at the components required to build a Raspberry Pi based arcade machine based on one of our kits. As you can see, this is one of our mini cabinet kits designed for the Raspberry Pi. Let's take a look inside. And let's look at some key components. Okay, the first thing you can see, the almost obvious thing, we have an arcade speaker. This is the smaller size. I believe that one is actually uh, 3 inch. We also have, you can see there, there are two volume buttons. We have, of course, the Raspberry Pi. And here we have an amplifier. Now, this amplifier is a, a mono amplifier, but you can actually use a stereo or a mono amplifier. Of course, we're only using one speaker, so as you probably remember, most old arcade games only use one speaker anyway. So what we have here is we have the stereo jack, you can see here, coming in. That's the sound coming in. And that's actually wired through to the jack plug here. Okay, so it comes out the jack plug here and into the amplifier here the amplifier at this end also has a negative and a positive power input and you can see they're actually connected directly to the power in socket if we trace this out you can see from the amplifier that we're going round and we have the positive and negative on the speaker there very important you get those the right way around to avoid interference and crackly noises other things we've got going on, you can see here we've got our driver board. It's connected via HDMI, and that's just connected to the standard Raspberry Pi HDMI port that you can see here. That's going in there. So that's just a straight output. You will, of course, need to set your Raspberry Pi to force the sound out of the 3.5mm jack plug here, uh, as well as having the screen output via HDMI to make sure you actually capture your sound through your amp. Now this particular amp uh, actually has a volume pop there that can be adjusted. That's roughly set at about halfway at the moment. And what you need to do to make sure you don't get any interference on your sound is in your volume settings for your Pi, set them roughly about 50% and then bring your amplifier up and set this at 50% and that should actually give you less crackle, uh, the fuzzy noise at the beginning, you still get a bit. What is important here though is that we tie all the power uh, positives and the grounds together. So you can see here that we've actually got power going up to the screen that you can see going in here. We've also got uh, a connection to that ground to our Raspberry Pi as well so they're actually tied in and you can also see what we've got here we've actually got our power tower pi coming from the same point so our pi is powered directly via its uh, uh, usb connector there it's the uh, micro usb yeah it's connected through to our power supply now this is all powered from five volts i, I like to use five volts at two amps um, the rule really with ampage is uh, you can have more ampage than what you require and the devices connected will only actually draw what's needed. It's handy in case you want to add anything extra but we also have the draw of the screen. Now this particular kit during tests at Arcade Club uh, it's actually drawing 0 0.07 of an amp. So you could basically run this um, for a month the cost would probably be pence. Okay, it would probably be pence. In terms of connection to the buttons, we have, as you can see here, some slip-on connectors that you can get quite cheaply from eBay. They normally come in bundles. And we have some coming off, as you can see here, coming off to our buttons. Basically, each of the buttons is wired to our GPIO connector on the Pi, and there's also a bit of hot melt glue there, but that's mainly just to make sure they don't fall off. 
it's not harming the pie at all but be careful with hot melt glue because you could actually get it hot enough to damage something on the board this was actually one of the early prototypes uh, I wasn't as wise about hot melt glue at that point and I have actually damaged not in this but in other things I've worked on particularly jammer power supplies have actually damaged the circuit board and rendered the power supply useless so be careful if you're going to use hot melt glue use it sparingly that's a bit generous on there at the moment we've also of course got our other ports that are free our ethernet and usb ports <coughs> excuse me in terms of how the buttons are operating they're connected directly to the gpio connector that you can see here so we've got buttons connected uh, via their micro switches to uh, the GPIO we've also got our joystick connected to the GPIO and also our volume buttons that you can see going off here notice from this that we've actually got a common ground down this side and that's just going to a ground pin on the Raspberry Pi that you can see at this end and all buttons and the joystick itself will have two wires going to each of them they'll have a common ground which the raspberry pi has more than one ground pin so the actual uh, ground pins on there i think there's three but you can have more you can actually set them to actually act as ground pins there'll be a ground connection to each of the micro switches if you look in the back there you can actually see there's a yellow wire running around the joystick commonly on the micro switches and the Raspberry Pi itself is, is set up to detect when one of those button connections on, connected to a GPIO pin goes low. And it goes low by suddenly connecting that micro switch wire that's going to the GPIO to earth. So that, in technical terms that brings it low. The Raspberry Pi detects that and then in return acts as if a button has been pressed on a keyboard so basically we're wiring the buttons to the GPIO connector there's no USB required and it is fast enough the delay is nothing that I can actually sense at all on there um, there's certainly no delay when you're playing the games so you don't actually need to buy a fancy USB connector or anything else like that just buy some of these cables here that you can see and they're just female connectors to go onto the male pins of the GPIO and nothing more than that really uh, in terms of our power connector here I'm actually using uh, a 2.1 pin power supply so that's a standard round pin power supply commonly found on TV boxes and Android boxes that plugs in here and that's actually a panel mount connector there that you can see Speaker wise you can see I'm using what's known as uh, speed clips They're commonly found in car stereo shops as well So you can pick those up you can also pick them up on eBay what that enables you to do is use uh, I use stainless self tappers as I do with most of my products. I like stainless no rust You can actually see that it creates a screw thread here That clips it on you can also see the clips onto the speaker as well So it gives you a screw thread where one doesn't exist very simple very cheap so i do recommend those pick them up at a local car shop the screen itself you can see in position i also hot glue just the corners to make sure there's no movement again be careful with hot glue there's some at the top there's actually some at the bottom as well and we've also got our board there that's actually got things like changing the input and things like that and the board is powered here it's soldered onto the back of the connector comes round and it's going straight to the 5 volt supply here the important bit is to tie in all your positive power feeds and your ground all to the same power supply so the Pi is actually connected to the power from here as well that you can see there and that reduces interference on your sound this little amplifier here uh, what we've actually got is from the 3.5 mil plug here I've actually tied together both left and right outputs into one which is fine it won't damage the Pi that's fed into on the white wire here is fed into the input for the amplifier and the white wire is actually the um, remaining ground from the 3.5mm jack plug if I actually unplug it for you 
and we'll look at what we've got. If you tie together the end pin and this section here very carefully, it's those two that connect together for to tie the sound together and then your earth is actually on this top piece here. You can see the bands separating everything out. Just pop that back. You will of course need an image to create this uh, and everybody who buys one of our kits can actually obtain uh, an image link from me and it's all set up. You can also have a, a wiring diagram for your um, button and joystick connectors. That's not a problem. Supply free of charge with uh, anyone who buys a cabinet kit. Unless you bought up one of our kits, um, please don't ask because uh, I'm it actually takes a lot of time to set these things up the volume buttons act exactly in the same way to actually turn the volume up and down but they're configured within the software you're looking at about 12 to 20 hours to configure the image so if you've got one of our kits this makes it quick uh, I'll supply wiring diagrams and things like that that's not a problem then you can easily build your own kit in the next part of this series on how to build your own Raspberry Pi Arcade cabinet kit. I'm actually going to be looking at the wiring diagrams in detail and explaining how things work. If you've enjoyed this video, look forward to the next part. You can find us on eBay at arcade underscore flat underscore pack to purchase one of our kits. You can also buy our kits from extremehardware.co.uk if you want more of these videos, please like and subscribe. Um, who knows, even buy one of our kits. I will see you on the next one. Thank you for watching.